everybody. Thanks for joining. I hope you have your beverage of choice. I have a seltzer. I will show you. It's really a seltzer. I promise. It's back there in the corner. Um, and whatever you chose for your beverage at home, hopefully you have that ready. Um, and like usual, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes just to gather some things that you may still need to get or get settled in, get set up. Um, you're going to need a canvas or paper, acrylic paint, some sort of vessel to hold water. I have a, a bowl or a cup, something to hold some water to rinse your brushes out. Um, your, if you need an easel, have an easel set up or a, a paper towel to maybe dry your brushes off or wipe some excess paint off. So while you gather those things, uh, I'm going to just make a couple of announcements. Um, first is I have next week's schedule. So Monday, we are going to be doing drawing and embellishments from 1 to 2 with Miss Linda. Uh, Tuesday, March 31st, we'll be finishing off your paper mache sculptures. So with that, whatever element you have at home that you want to decorate with, markers, pencils, uh, if you want to hot glue things on, if you want to, you know, crayons, pastels, whatever you need to decorate your paper mache, um, have that prepared and ready. Mary Pat Bean is going to be the instructor and she's going to guide you through finishing off those paper mache sculptures that we started last week. Uh, Wednesday, April 1st will be an illustrated story time from 1 to 2. That is going to be something you want to watch. Um, we have a very special setup on Wednesday. It's not like anything we've done in the past and I think you're really, really going to enjoy it. You can choose to just listen in. You can choose to join us and draw with us or just sit back and enjoy what we're saying and what's happening on, uh, on the live stream. So Wednesday will be really, really interesting. Jess is here. Jess, hi. Hi Jess, thanks for joining us. So that will be Wednesday. Thursday, April 2nd, we're gonna do uh, a project that I hope you have a chance to talk about over the weekend and spread the word. We're gonna have an instructional episode where we are actually sewing masks and we're gonna sew masks to donate to medical professionals who need them. So we're gonna have a person doing hand stitching in case you do not have a machine. And we're gonna have a, a person that has a machine and we're gonna provide the pattern that you would print off on your printer and have prepared. Uh, you would need also 100% cotton material or fabric of some sort um, and then we're gonna sew these masks and it's that's kind of the adult portion of, of That show you don't really I don't think you really want a lot of little kids around sewing machines or sharp needles or sharp objects But we're still creating a place for them too. There's something that they can do as well if um, You have stiffer cardstock like note card paper. That's perfect We're gonna create some tags and attach to the masks with words of inspiration and words of hope. We're gonna start uh, we're gonna write down and be their cheerleader section to these people that need these masks in the medical profession right now, and we're gonna help them the best way that we can by providing the masks and hopefully providing a little emotional support with some inspirational tags we attach. So if you know of anybody who um, knows how to sew or can organize a sewing group, uh, please do that over the weekend. I'll mention something on Monday, and we're gonna try and get this going, and there'll be a donation box where you can drop off your donated masks that you've made and then I will make sure that they get to a hospital or medical professionals that need them. So that will be Thursday. Thursday is going to be a pretty big episode. I have it time. The time is from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. We might go a little longer if we need to go a little longer because it's a pretty important cause. So uh, don't miss Thursday's episode. And Friday the 3rd, I'm sorry, Friday, April 3rd, Music Makers from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m and Nicole Clark will be teaching our Music Makers episode there. This whole calendar is gonna just be posted on our Facebook page, so if you've missed me saying something or some detail I didn't cover, it, it'll be posted, you can read it there. Uh, the materials for the Music Makers, you want either a cardboard paper towel or toilet paper roll, dried beans or dried rice, gum bands, balloons, aluminum foil, a stapler, and any decorating material such as markers, stickers, crayons, anything you want to decorate your music maker with. 
Okay, so that's the schedule for next week. I hope to see you all there, and I hope to see all of your work, which brings me to the next point. Send us your work, please. Please, 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 please take photographs of everything you're doing. I wanna see everything that you're making. I wanna know who you are, so make sure you include your name and how old you are. I wanna know your age, too. And what we'll be doing with all of the pictures is we're gonna compile a slideshow and we're gonna show them at the museum on the monitor when we're open back up to the public. So send us your photos. If they're adults, do they need to tell us how old they are? If you're an adult, you do not have to tell me how old you are, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, but I would love your name. I would love to know who is submitting this, the beautiful piece that you've taken the time to create. And I, I would like to know who you are, but you don't have to give me your age if you don't want to, that's okay. <laughs> um, and the last thing I'm gonna mention before I step out of the way and let Miss Linda take over is let us know how we're doing. Let us, give us feedback. Tell me everything. I wanna know everything you're thinking right now. So message in, sign in, give us feedback. If, you're ha if you have a topic or a project or um, something we haven't covered or something you, know, you really wanna see, message me. Let me know what you wanna see have happen. I'll see what I can do to get it on the schedule and we can hopefully do a project that you inspired. So let me know. Okay, without further ado, I'm gonna turn this over to Miss Linda and she is going to guide you through a painting of this gorgeous flower box that there's an example of in the background. And ladies and gentlemen and whomever's joining us right now, whoever you are, please send me your paintings. I really, really, really want to see them. Please keep us in the loop. All right, guys, I'm going to turn it over. There you go, Miss Linda. It's all you. Okay. Can you see me? <laughs> there you go. Hi, I'm Linda Calloway. I do flying pig paint parties with Linda. I am not doing paint parties currently because I am not meeting with people in their home or in public places to paint. So I love SAMA. I volunteer and teach children's classes at SAMA. So I am doing this freebie for SAMA and for you. But when the pandemic has lessened and we get out, keep me in mind, <laughs> and I'll give you a special price. <laughs> okay, now, this is the painting we're going to start. I honestly don't think we'll have time to finish it. I love this size, it's 12 uh, by 24, and that's not a standard size canvas. I bought, the, uh, at Michael's and I love them, but this is 11 by 14, which is a normal size canvas that I intended to use and realized it's way too small for you to see uh, through an iPhone and watch. So I also have a garage full of uh, 12 by 16s. That's a much better size for you to watch. And it's going, because it's so much larger, it's going to limit how much I can get done. Now, I don't know if the supply list mentioned a ruler. You can freehand it. I'm fairly good at freehanding. I don't know if you are. But I am going to draw a flower box shape, just a rectangle on here. Is this going to change because the uh, format of the canvas change? Of course it is. But I'm not gonna worry about that. I am just going to come up here. I'm coming in from the edge. You know, this has got centimeters on it. This ruler is so old, the inches have worn off. So maybe you know how to convert. I'm coming in nine centimeters on this side. And I'll come in nine centimeters on this side. I just want to get the flower box on here, fairly tall, and I'm just using a pencil. You may, I did that fairly dark. You may be able to see these lines. I'm not so worried about it because I'll just use my voice to do the description. 
I'm going to come up from the bottom a short distance. And apparently my flower box is going to be about 13 inches long. That's not that important. I am just making a square, a rectangle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. What I want to do now is to half it. And I am winging that. I'm gonna come halfway up this and I'm not measuring. If it's way off, it's a little off. I'm gonna come in here and divide my background also. And because I'm painting this white, I'm going to erase that first line. I love these erasers. You can get them for 99 cents. I don't know if Walmart carries them. All the uh, art supply houses do. It's called a kneadable eraser and they're lovely. They can be very, very old and you just pull them and knead them and they clean up and they don't tear your paper. A lot of times your pencil, when you're scrubbing it, will make a hole in your paper or wrinkle it. These are wonderful. So that line is completely gone and I am going to paint my background here gray and this I'm going to use a teal type color. Now, your background and your um, tabletop can be whatever color you want. I just love teal. It's one of my favorite colors. Oh, here's my beverage of choice. It's a diet soda with stevia. <laughs> okay. Not that one. Now, I'm putting out three colors. This says Bahama Blue. Do you have to use that color? Probably don't have that color. Uh, if you do not have a color that you like, and look, it doesn't squeeze out. If you don't have a color that you like, then mix one. I am doing three colors in this background because I like to do it very painterly. I am going to use some white, the Bahama blue, and a baby blue. Now, I know I say now a lot, and I have an Oklahoma accent. <laughs> I, I, I your, have an Oklahoma accent. I love your accent, Ms. Linda. <laughs> I moved here. I'm, I'm a newbie in Bedford. I moved here three years ago. And until you lived here, what, 25, 30 years, you're still a newbie? <laughs> That's probably about right. That's about right. So, uh, excuse me. I'm getting... I don't know if this brush, this brush is very soft. I don't think that's the one I want. I do like these chip brushes. This one I pay 59 cents for. Most of the time these chip brushes cost you 99 cents. But this one I found on a bargain and I bought 12 of them I think. They, they're not good brushes, not at all. But then you don't need very good brushes for what I'm doing. I'm just covering the canvas. And this should be fast. And I am not being very, very neat about it. I'm going different directions. I will leave some of this white unblended. It gets that painterly look, and I really like that. When you get this covered, pretty much, I'm gonna do it down to the uh, flower box, but I don't, or a planter box, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to do it very heavy right here. And I'm not having a great contrast with these colors. That's okay. Notice that I am doing this quickly. There's no need to do this. <laughs> now, and our Patron saint of art, Bob Ross, he paints quickly. And he makes his happy little accidents. Well, you may or may not have any 
strokes that you consider missed strokes. The worst thing you could do painting this background is paint, 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 paint until you have one solid color. Now, does that make it bad? No. But if you can see the difference between this and this and this, it's not as painterly. And if that's your style, go ahead and use it. It's not mine. And this, see, it's already got paint on it. It takes me two seconds to get that side done. And I'm gonna do across the top and the other side and get my thumb in it, which is fine. I'm wearing an apron because I'm messy. If you don't have an apron, then you'll be decorating your um, clothes with paint. It's inevitable. I, I try to keep a drawer full of old clothes so that I don't have to wear my better clothes when I paint. Okay, I can come back to that. But since I already had the paint out, I wanted to use it up. Now, I'm going to a medium gray for the bottom. This, <laughs> having trouble with my little stand-up easels. Should we switch easels, Miss Linda? Do you need help? Nah, I'm fine. Okay. If it really starts bothering me, I'll holler. I can go on that other side and hold it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Would we have to look at you? Yeah, well, you might. <laughs> Just don't move the canvas. <laughs> okay. I am going to do the same thing with this gray. You don't need as much gray. And this one is called medium gray. I'm not even washing my brush. One reason why I'm not washing my brush is I like to use all the colors all over. The only thing I think I didn't smear around is this gray. But I used a lighter black for outlining so it doesn't look like that gray didn't get shared. But on these flowers, I've got this turquoise color. Uh, these yellowish flowers have got turquoise and pink and other colors in them because that's how I like to integrate it. Now this, I want it to go horizontal. And the problem is, my little um, easel, I have to turn it over in a minute and paint that where the uh, easel feet are blocking me. Notice that you can paint down and then over. Now, I know I'm a fast painter, and if I'm going to get this lesson taught in an hour's time, which is very doubtful, I am going to have to go fast. In my paint parties, I like to let people paint at their own pace and um, not rush them. However, you have the luxury on playback, not when it's live, but on playback, to pause, rewind. That'd be an awful lot of Linda, wouldn't it? <laughs> so you can pause it, you can um, fast forward it, you can get to the spot where you had questions. And if you're just a visual learner, you can even mute me. Okay, we're gonna call that good. Now, I'm not going to continue to use this brush because I'm going to white as my next color. And I'm gonna change brushes. I'm gonna wipe this off on the paper towel because if I just have this brush full of paint and put it in my water, my paint water is going to get very dirty very quickly. I'm just gonna let that sit a while. I don't like to leave my brushes in the paint because it's easy to knock it with your arm and make a big mess. So I'm going to put out some more white. 
And I am just using these little um, two fluid ounces of paint that mostly came from uh, Michael's Hobby Lobby or Walmart. I do like the folk art. I do like some of these other paints that are better quality, but they all work. You might have to put more than one layer if the paint is thinner. Okay, I'm going to paint this one mostly horizontally, but right here to get this edge smoother, I'm going to paint it vertically. By the time we get this painted, you're not going to know which way I painted. And I know it's already white, but if you don't get a base coat on top of this canvas, and I don't gesso my uh, canvases normally. Uh, people ask me, do you gesso them? Normally I do not because they're pre-gessoed and if I'm doing something where I have lots of like a portrait. If I was going to do a portrait on here, I would gesso it, two coats. But that just smooths it out. It gets rid of all the um, canvas grain, the lines that you see. But right now, I am doing a very loose painting of flowers. And I don't care if the brush strokes show. I don't care if the canvas shows. I'm just getting in my base coats right now. It kind of makes it more interesting, doesn't it, Miss Linda? Whenever, I think so too. I love yeah. texture. Yeah, the texture of the paint, the brush, and the painterly nature, it gives you direction uh, of the brush stroke, and it really just kind of gives it a lot more, like you said, texture, character, a place for your eye to rest. It's more visually interesting. Now, I didn't put as much paint right in this area on purpose because we're about to paint over that. I'm just using up some of this light blue that I don't even see up here. And I am just using some strokes to kind of use this paint up and change the temperature of this in the back. This is kind of a blue gray and it's a cool color. This teal color is a lot warmer uh, and brighter. So I'm just kind of changing it because it makes it more interesting. Now, I'm going to wash this brush, and I'm going to show you this. Uh, Miss Michael is going to show me where the best place to put this. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are two style of flowers. Totally different. I don't care which one you choose or your own. I, I will show you three styles of flower, and you choose which blossom you want to use. Now. You can use any color. Uh, I would choose something that goes well with the blue and the gray. I, the example I started out watching was very, very pale pinks. And it was beautiful. And I said, that's not my style. So I put in the fuchsia pink, the light pink, and then I used one that said peach. It looked like flesh tones and it wasn't pretty. So I added a gold to it and I added some of the other colors to it and now I kind of like it. It's not stark white, it's not bright yellow, it's someplace in between. So let me show you how to do these and we're just doing it on paper because paper's cheap. And I am going to start out with a marker because if I don't draw it with the marker, you're not going to see much of it. And it's going to be very, very simple. Miss Linda, we had uh, Amina ask if when you wash your brushes out, are you going to wash them out Bob Ross style? Oh, he does the wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe the quote is, beat the devil out of it. Is it doesn't he say you beat the devil out of the brush? <laughs> well, no, I don't really do this. Oh, that looks like a fried egg, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> okay. I am doing very abstract shape. We've got a center, we've got smaller petals, and we've got larger petals. That's very elementary. But after 
here it's completely dry and I have a hair dryer for that reason. You can use paint pens and do doodling on top of it. I happen to like this style. I haven't painted in that style in a long time. I think that's what I'm going to paint on this one. But I'm going to show you how I did this so that you can use this style if you like it. So what am I going to do for that style? Oh, it's so hard. Now, I am not overthinking this. I made curvy lines. I made sort of a center for a rose or a rose type shape. And now I'm going to add leaves here and there. That's all. I like to have the leaves when you've got more than one, one coming out behind the other or beside each other. I like to put them random. If you'll look up here, you can't tell exactly where those leaves are coming from. They're coming from the flowers and there may be, there's three in here, there's two there, there's a single one. I just fill in with leaves and the florist does that too. Do you know what I got <laughs> today? I got the most beautiful bouquet that came from uh, the flower shop. Um, what's that one right there? By bits of time loving touch loving touch yes she called me and said I'm putting it on your porch <laughs> come oh, get it nice. so social distancing yes <laughs> uh, it was very beautiful who my, are they from they were from my son and his family Aww. because Sunday is my birthday I'll be happy birthday yay we love you I bought myself some cupcakes <laughs> Okay. Chocolate, of course. Oh, my. <laughs> yes. Reese's flavor. Oh, oh my. Even yes. Even better. Yeah. Now, I am putting out, when I put out paint, I put out little bits. If you just kind of point to where you want me to be, then I'll. I just put out little bits of paint. Uh, I don't like wasting it. If I waste a little bit, I'm okay with that. But I don't, I put out quarter size spots of paint because if I need more I get it if I don't use it all up I haven't wasted a lot I need a yellow and my yellow is bright I don't need but a little bit so sometimes I take the lid off the only reason this is dangerous is if you knock it over and then you have wasted a lot of paint okay that's all I needed all I needed was to get my brush wet. Now, I'm gonna put just a little bit of this yellow out here, uh, funky style. What happens when you, oh, I may need some more yellow in a minute. What happens if blue and yellow mix? Green. You get a green color if they mix. So, I am just very quickly painting this in. Uh, uh, normally I would draw this with pencil and not worry about my lines. This is opaque paint. Notice that I am painting over this marker lines and they're disappearing because this paint is very opaque. And teal is one of my favorite colors. I'm gonna put just a little bit in these leaves right now just because I've got it on my brush. Remember I said I like to spread the colors around. Normally you don't think of leaves as being blue, but they can have blue in them. There's some out there in nature, I'm sure. I have to also interrupt you for just a minute, Miss Linda, and sure. you've got some birthday wishes rolling in right now. So Jess and Amina have wished you happy birthday. And Amina would like to know if you are possibly sharing those chocolate cupcakes at all. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, let me tell you, it's not very wise right now yeah. because of social distancing. She said probably not because of the social distancing. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I only bought the little package pre made. I was going to buy a cake mix. I don't need that much. Now, my grandchildren would eat them, but I would have to go deliver them and knock on the door. And then I would be, did you wash your hands? <laughs> So the color you're using right now, Miss Linda, is kind of a, an orangey, corally color. 
um, from what it looks like. Candy apple red. Candy apple red, okay. okay. Now actually that doesn't blend very well with this color, uh, but I wanted contrast and um, it's my flower. I could paint it any color I want. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And uh, earlier today, we had a live stream with Jen, and Jen was teaching teaching us the color wheel and about complementary colors and uh, primary colors. And it looks like if that's a candy apple red and blue and yellow, you've got a primary colored flower right there. I do. Just uh, Jess Benton said it's a fried egg flower. It's a fried egg flower. <laughs> it oh is. my goodness, on Friday, fried egg flower. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought the same when I drew it, but. Um, it's not going to look that way once I, I love this, it's either citron or yellow green, what is this called? Citron green, it's one of my very favorite colors. You know, that color is gonna be the color that pops out first here with spring, like in a couple of weeks or hopefully days even, with a 60 degree weather, it might be sooner rather than later. That is the color of the buds on the trees. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. Oh, I love Makes it. Makes me happy. Me too. Smells yes. great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, I've got two-tone leaves, but I'm not worried about it. That one just is where the color's mixed. Now, I am going to do this rose-type flower. It is fairly easy that in the background maybe you can see it. It is fairly easy but you can't pick at it. I have taught this to students as young as six years old and they've done a beautiful job. The reason they did a beautiful job is because they painted it like this. They did not go. Oh. Don't overthink it. Yeah just swish the colors in and I know that sounds uh, counterintuitive for a lot of you because you want it to look great. These flowers, rather than looking great, look better when they're haphazard. And that last step is to put haphazard black on it. And that sounds wrong, but believe me, that's the best way to do them. And I'm getting all my paints out here. I really could have sorted out my colors and came with like six to ten colors, but no, I had to bring the whole thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to have choices, that's all right. Yes. Especially when painting. This is like a three-quarter inch brush, and it's a flat. It's one of my favorites. I have some rounds. I have um, other shapes, but I love these flats because you can make thin lines, and fat lines and thin lines, and you can change the shape of what you're doing. Now, I may come back with some red. Right now I'm coming into the pink, and I'm doing the same thing with the pink. I'm swirling it in. When you see a rose in a painting, it has white in it. If it doesn't have some contrast, which this one doesn't, it doesn't really show up. So I'm going to my paper towel and getting the pink off and coming into the white. This looks wrong for a while, but once we get everything on it, it looks good. I'm just coming in with the edge and swirling it in here. And that's about all I'm gonna to do to it. And you're going, well, no, that doesn't look very good. Maybe, maybe not. But by the time we get the black in it, it's gonna look so much better. Now, I do need to let this dry. This one, no, when you touch it and it comes off on you, it's not dry. Okay, bear with me for just a moment. <laughs> Nobody likes to hear the hair dryer, but uh, you can use the heat gun. The heat gun will scorch paper if you're not careful. This is just an extra hair dryer. I think this one came from a garage sale for a dollar. Always try them out before you take them home if you buy them. Now, the reason it has to be really dry is I'm about to use paint pens. 
these paint pens I got off of Amazon, so you may not be able to get them right there. They do have them at Walmart if you're allowed to shop there right now. But I've got a black and a white, and that's all I really need for this. Carol okay. Haddock says, I sure miss you and your talent, Linda. Who's that? Carol Haddock. Haddock. Carol Haddock. Hi, Carol. She taught second grade at the school oh. I taught in. There you go. And now she is a proud grandmother of two handsome boys. Hi, Carol. I didn't know I was so famous. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am starting to put scribbles on it. If your paint pen is not doing what you want it to, you just touch it and it flows down to the tip. This is an extra fine and I like it for doodling. I got um, some paint pens at AC Moore. Like they're yes. real cheap right now. I don't even know if AC Moore is still open. I don't know. I don't know. They were going out of business. Yes, I, think. I know. They are going out of business, which is sad. So they were like 60% off. Yeah. In terms of your canvas on the right there, Linda, the finished canvas, do you have paint pen on that canvas or is that all with brushes? For folks that might not have a paint pen at home, they may just have brushes. It's still, is it still able to achieve? It's all brushes with the exception of a credit card type thing. And I will okay. show you this technique. On the canvas over there. Okay. Right. It's so, all brushes. Very good. And then I used uh, this. This is something somebody sent to me. They wanted to give me a consolidation loan. I don't want the consolidation loan. I want the card. <laughs> <laughs> you will take the card. I will take the card. <laughs> so those folks who are joining us at home, it's uh, if you don't have a paint pen at the moment, you the brush for your canvas will be fine. And I think actually some of the techniques with the brush, what you're doing there, Miss Linda, would still be pretty look pretty good. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. that uh, paint pen is just a much more precise, accurate line. It's easier for a beginner painter. Yes. I'm going to stop right here and go to my liner brush, if I can find it here. No, that's not the one I want. Things get on this uh, tablecloth get lost. And it, I know it's not in my um, bag. I'll just use this round one. Tiny bit of water on the brush. I'm going into the white and I'm going to tickle this paper with this liner brush. And I don't have enough paint on it. I'm putting it on there, rake, uh, I picked up red. And raking it off on the edge and you have to use very light pressure. And you see the difference in the paint pen and the brush. It's not that much. I can do some of the same techniques with the brush, but it's faster to use the paint pen. See, I use, from here to here is the brush. Sometimes you have to go back over it if it's not bright enough for you. Okay. So yes, you can do it with the uh, brushes. Now, I'm just going to do this with the brush with a couple of colors in it. It's got red, a tiny bit of pink, and some white. And I'm just touching it down for more decorations on there. And look what it did. It brought the red from out here into the teal. Now, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. So I am going to very quickly. They asked for a close up. OK. Ooh, look at that. I don't so, have any tattoos. <laughs> where's the, show me a point with a, a paintbrush or something uh, with a difference between the paint pen and your paintbrush. Okay. Now, see, this one, I can make it, dot it like that, and it gets larger. Uh, this was the paint pen around here. This was the brush around here, and it's not quite as bright. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that it's a little brighter with the paint pen. Now, if you've got more money than cents, that's not me, <laughs> you can order or buy Posca pens, and they're wonderful. They do not clog. 
they uh, last quite a while, but they're also expensive. So they're kind of the um, Cadillac of paint pens. Well, I'm, I'm a Subaru kind of person. <laughs> I'm a Cadillac <laughs> person. Right now, right now I have a Nissan. I have a <laughs> Nissan Rogue. Okay. Now, I can go ahead and do these uh, things the same way, but this is not the style. I'm very quickly going to put the black on here and then start painting my flowers. The one reason I stopped on these over here is because I wanted that background to dry. And um, this is a very nice facility where we are, but I am going to complain that one complaint I have about this building is I don't see a visible clock. Well, Miss Linda, it is 7.42. We've got roughly 15 minutes. If you go a little over, it's okay. Okay, well, in order to show the different techniques, I am gonna to have to go over. All right. And they can stay for, I don't know how long you wanna stay, but they can <laughs> stay for a while because there are some techniques I'm gonna show. I didn't expect to get finished with this. I just expected to show you some of these techniques. Now, this is fast. I am going to change these lines. I am letting this round brush barely touch it, tickle the paper. And what that does is I get thick and thin lines. And all of a sudden it brings this to life. And is that a perfect rose? Of course not. But is it enough of a rose that you know what it's supposed to be? Yes. I think so. And I like for the fact that it's not perfect. Now, I am doing these leaves with quick strokes. I am barely touching this. The better quality brushes you have, the easier it is to manipulate. But this was in a package and it wasn't much money. There were eight brushes in it and it was like, six or eight dollars, so you don't have to spend a fortune to get one that's good enough. Now, can you spend a fortune on brushes? Oh, most assuredly you can. Okay, so these have design pattern on them, and these do too. They're similar but not alike. Uh, one thing I should, probably should do to this one over here, I like these thicker lines in here. That paint pen was real thin, so I'm thickening up these lines a little bit and you don't have to do every one. What I should do over here is not lose my train of thought. <laughs> oh, put some of this turquoise in there. Not a lot, just a little swirl here, a little swirl here, and there's three little swirls of that turquoise. When you see it up in this flower box, it integrates it into the flower box and you can see where they go. I am going to take my, let's take gray, and I am gonna sketch some flowers in here. I want a great big one right here. I want another great big one right here. I want some middle ones. This one's gonna be huge, kind of, kind of off to this side of the middle. And we want a few buds in here. I'm just very quickly sketching where I think these are gonna go. And I know I'm gonna have some leaves, so I'm just gonna put a leaf shape here and there. And have I planned out this design really, really well? Nope. <laughs> and I'm not gonna worry about it. I can just start painting this. I, oh, I told you I was gonna show you another style. I'll do that very quickly in a minute. But that kind of gives me a pattern of where I'm going to go. It's like a blueprint. I want a little bud up here. And probably one, you want to overlap some of these. Some of these are crowding the others out and you can't see all of them. If, if you just had this one and this one not touching nothing in between, it's not gonna look good. 
You want to crowd either another one behind these or you want to put some leaves in there to take up this space. And then when you get all the leaves that you want to paint, you probably should put some dark in there. Do you see what I have done? You fill in the blank spaces with some color and then it starts getting integrated together. Okay, I'm gonna show you a trick to make your flower box look well, look good. Where's that silly consolidation card? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna paint with this. I'm gonna take my brush and go over the edge of this, for lack of things, we're gonna call it a credit card. And it's not perfect. Do I care? Nope. I want it to be loose and interesting. This may have been made with pallet wood. This may be an orange crate that somebody painted. This may be Great. It could be a manufactured flower box. I don't know. But I can get straighter lines using this than I can with my brush normally. That's a really clever technique there, Miss Linda. And I, uh, man, for, for how would, what kind of a card could people use at home to even help? Um, you know, you've got that nifty card there, but what else could we maybe use? Um, you could cut it out of cardstock. Or even a business card of some sort. A business Probably. card would work. Or card popsicle, popsicle stick. Popsicle stick would work. Well, I think that may be a little fat. Um, a piece of plastic, a plastic lid that goes on Cool Whip Bowl or something, you could cut out a straight edge. You okay. just want a straight edge. And you want it to suggest that it's coming down through here, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I need a fairly straight line at the bottom. I'm not gonna do that right now, and maybe even darker, because this is a little darker along the bottom because it's shadowed. So, I'm not gonna worry about that bottom right now, but I'm gonna show you another trick that you can do with this to make it look aged. While it's still wet, too, I'm sure is yes, an important it's, part to note there. Yeah, I kind of went like that so I wouldn't have too much on it. And I want it to look aged. Oh, there's some good ones there that I'm getting. And that's the fact that it hasn't been gessoed and is really, really smooth. It's why the paint is jumping around. And I can put as much or as little of this paint as I want. On the other one, ah, oh, I like that. If you decide you don't like it this distressed, then what you need to do is just paint over it in white. Let it dry and paint back over it in white. I also like to bring it in around the edges. It makes a neat noise, by the way. <laughs> And if at any time you think that's too much, you can use a baby wipe or something else. And you can, let's say that you hate that. You can totally get it off. Your baby wipe is your friend. And you can totally get it off and if you can't and it is driving you crazy that does not bother me in fact I like it this is a good tool <laughs> finger paints for adults <laughs> that's right it's a very good tool if you totally don't like something and the uh, wet one didn't take care of it then what you need to do is let it dry and then you can uh, paint over it it does need to be dry to make corrections or you're gonna end up with mud and that's not oh there we go 
Now some people will do this step and love it, and other people will hate it. I happen to like it. Do you, can, do you see it going, let me let you get a close up look at this one. And I love this shape, but the reason I didn't do this shape was it's not a common size. But look at all these edges here, how it's distressed looking. Look, I have some blue in here. I bet you know how I did these little darker blue flowers. That was so easy to do those darker blue flowers. You just take the brush and do that. And lift it up. And you get, if you want a line to connect them, that's all you have to do. And odd numbers are usually more appealing. Yes, I, I nearly do three or five, yes. That one didn't do well, so you put it back down. And you don't even have to have the stems. Some of these don't have stems. This one doesn't. This one does it. Some of these do. That's okay. And how how did I get this baby's breath or whatever that is? I'm not even sure what it is. But I just used the handle of a paintbrush. Now I'm going to show you another neat trick. Do, 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 do. There's no white right here. Okay. This is a pencil that hasn't been used. The eraser hasn't been used. Let me do it on the paper. When you do this, you can make beautiful, and there goes the, there goes the easel. You can make beautiful circles, berries. This little branch right here has red berries on it. And you can see them because uh, this unused eraser makes lovely little dots. Sometimes you think, oh, that artist was so good. Well, no, the artist knew some tricks. I like the tricks. Another thing that is good to add to the one that I may add to that one is a little bit of gold. A little bit of metallic is a good thing to add to things. And on all of these paint brands, they have different metallics. This one is bright. Um, not as bright as the other, it's called antique gold. And it's beautiful. But if you're going to use this, you probably should use it in moderation. I don't add glitter to my painting. Some people do. I'm not a glitter girl, but I do like the metallics and it really changes what you've got going to have a few metallics in there. But I wouldn't put them in one spot. What do you think is the rule of thumb about the different colors that you use? Spread them around. I think the only place that needs any metallics is right in here because it the color of this metallic blends in with this and once this dries it will be shiny you're not going to see this until it completely dries and then it's going to have a sheen to it and i'm just bouncing it around here and there not very many spots where i see some of this uh, orangey color I can add a little bit of gold. Another place that's good to put the gold, mm, right in there. Another place that's good to put the gold is with the scraper and scrape it in the background here and there, maybe around the edges, and then you're good to go. I, I know there's a little bit of delay for questions. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, I'll keep talking for just a little bit longer. Now, the original design that I use for inspiration, I try not to copy anything. There's my signature. I always paint my signature, but I didn't this time. I used the Sharpie, the trace this on there. I would trace the thickness of this word onto the
I will finish this one and I will post it on the SAMA site. So if you're wanting to know what it's going to look like, you can look back on there. And I said I was going to so it's going to be different from this one. I'll post them both, the traditional one and the doodle ones. And then you can decide which ones you like. It's not going to go up in the next two days. I don't paint on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Nor should you. It's your birthday. Take the day off. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay, well, thank you so much, Miss Linda. I really appreciate that. Uh, and you know what? Maybe we could even talk about uh, for Monday's session, we had you in for drawing and embellishments. Maybe we touch base and finish us off for a little bit. That's something that we could talk about. If you at home would like to see that, if, that, if you're working diligently in all the skill sets that Miss Linda has just shared with you, and you'd like to see a little bit more and uh, see this particular painting the whole way through to the final product, message us, let us know, and we can include that on Monday's session from one to two. Um, the rest of the schedule for next week, one more time, is that Miss Linda will be on Monday, Tuesday, March 31st, we'll be finishing off the paper mache objects that we started with Mary Pat Bean in Pigeon Hill Studio. We'll be finishing, finishing those off with Mary Pat again in Pigeon Hill Studio on Tuesday, March 31st uh, from 1 to 2. So just bring your markers, your Sharpies, anything to color, things you might need to get um, to help finishing off your paper machés. Wednesday, April 1st will be an illustrated story time. Um, that one can just be a fun one for you guys to tune into. You can participate with us, just paper and a pen or crayons or markers, or sit and just listen and watch. Uh, it's up to you. Thursday, April 2nd, will be our sewing uh, contributions. We're going to sew some masks for some medical professionals, and we're going to donate them. Um, there's going to be a little creative part for kids to help participate, so it's a great mommy and me kind of activity. If you're a sewer, get your machines ready. If you're not a particular sewer, I hope to have someone here to teach you how to hand stitch so you can still uh, donate and make for somebody else, your family, yourself as well. But then also I'm going to ask that you make for somebody else and that we can give those to medical professionals in need. Uh, Morgan. April 3rd. Um, yes. Erin says that she would like to see your process. Okay. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. Let me, I will build in a day with me one day. Uh, think about, Erin, whatever you would like me to paint. I usually do landscapes. She shop, saw your show at um, the... Um, Briar Valley. Briar, Briar Valley yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, fantastic. I can, I can, uh, I'll do an hour of oil and it'll be maybe landscapes. That's usually what I stick to. Um, sure. I've got no problem. Well, I, I like that. that. I like the heart with the plants, the organic heart. I, I do like that. That as well. I, yeah, I'm open to, to what you guys want to see. I'll show you anything. We'll sit down and we'll talk. Have like a, a coffee hour, a coffee talk. So a little, <laughs> an oil and a cup of coffee, and we'll just chit chat. And we can um, get verklempt. <laughs> and we get verklempt. <laughs> yes, yes. We're gonna we're gonna. She hone said in it with our... an Oklahoma accent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're gonna bring Mike Myers and Bob Ross together in one room. It's our, It's gonna be a beautiful time. It's gonna be beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Friday, April 3rd, it will be Music Makers with Nicole Clark and a guest instructor. Uh, she's asking for you guys to gather up cardboard paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls, dried rice or dried beans, gum bands, balloons, aluminum foil, staplers, we probably just need one stapler, and any decorative <laughs> materials, markers, <laughs> stickers, or crayons. <laughs> Uh, we need precisely seven staplers <laughs> yeah. per family. No, just the one. Good. It's an arrangement of staplers in case different. No, just one stapler. I'm kidding. Uh, if, if they've missed something, they can catch it yes. on replay. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. If there's something that you needed to watch over, these videos are for viewing again and again and again. They're posted on our Sam of Bedford Facebook. Please go back, watch them, like them, uh, share them for any other family or person that is uh, needing to be a little creative, kind of escape the world right now and just kind of hone in on their artistic ability. 
uh, let them know that we're doing this. And next week, it, we have a full schedule. Please also take pictures of everything that you do and send them to me. I want to see, please, 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 please. Uh, you don't have to include your age if you don't want to, that's fine. But please let me know who you are. And we're going to scroll these in a slideshow at the museum and we're open back up to the public. So it's your opportunity to get into a museum and to be shown in a museum. Um, let us show other people what you've done. Um, so thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you coming and tuning in all this week. Thank you for the support. It's been absolutely wonderful to be a part of this. So keep keep week and we'll see you Monday. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.